is to help um, this committee to 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 do an oversight. So Treasury, as a vote, also has to come and report. If I come and I say there's a problem in Treasury, they will still have to come and explain. So we um we had, we we were established to try and help the committee to do the oversight. So Treasury is also part of the departments that we look after. And if we pick up problems, we will definitely come and report to the to the committee. You have the health department where they understand by just under a billion, environmental affairs 700 million, and then transport about 640 million. But there was one department that was worrying us, and this is Statistics South Africa where they showed an overspending of 28.3 million on their overall um, uh, uh, budget, which is 1.2 percent. And in terms of economic classification, so if you look at this 11 billion, how is it broken down in terms of economic classification? So the goods and services, that's where the most underspending was of 5.6 uh, billion, which is 7.9% of the allocated budget. But in transfers and subsidies, you also recorded 5.1 billion, and most of those are coming from COCTA, I'll just explain now, and um, there was some underspending in capital assets of 2.1 billion. You don't want to see large underspendings in capital assets because that's where the investment comes from. So I think we need to try and get the spending as much as possible in terms of um, spending on capital assets. So just looking at the department that we are worried about and especially in terms of compensation of employees, the first one is the defense um, department where they overspend by 2.9 billion of their compensation budget and this is above the ceiling that was set for them. So um, two years ago, the appropriation or the, com um, the parliament approved compensation ceilings for the different departments. So what that means is a department is given a ceiling and they must work within that compensation ceiling because what we were trying, the aim of introducing this compensation ceiling was to move money away from operations and try to increase or shift the composition of spending into capital. So these departments are st were struggling to remain within the ceiling. So the biggest one was the defense department where they overspent by 2.9 billion. Then you, we had police and the overspending in police was just close to half a billion. But this was because of the public sector wage agreement where um, the agreement was much higher than what the department could afford. And as a result, they had to apply for a environment and Treasury did approve the environment of the amount. So they're not going to show um, irregular expenditure in their financials. And this is the same as um, Home Affairs. Uh, international Relations and Cooperation, the overspending was just 126 million. But this is because they didn't budget according to the ceiling that was given. But also remember that um, DECO has a lot of activities outside of the country. So the movements in the exchange rates tend to affect their budget. So that 126 million was as a result of that. Home affairs problems were a bit difficult. Firstly, the amount was quite small. It was 95 million. But the 95 million was mainly because of overtime. Um, this was accumulated over the festive season, but another big um, reason was that there was the IEC and there was the registration weekend, so home affairs had to open during those um, time period. As a result, they had an overspending of 95 million, but they applied to the Treasury and we did approve most of the environment. As I said earlier, Statistics SA overspent on the vote, but they also overspent on their compensation of employee ceiling uh, with about 50.5 million. And we have been talking to States SA, asking them, can they please uh, implement the strategies that will help them remain within the ceiling? But they must just make sure the people that exit the system are not the technical people so that they don't lose the skill. So they need to come up with a strategy to try and deal with um, the overexpenditure. 
then there are other department chairperson and honorable members where there was some underspending against their budget and the biggest one was correctional services where the underspending was close to a billion um, of their budget of 17 billion and this was because the, d the department decided that they will not fill up all the funded positions that they have and um, also they still have outstanding payments for the implementation of the OSD, which is the Occupation Specific Dispensation Phase 2. So what they're trying to do is they don't fill up the post, they save the money, and then once they have enough money, then they can do, uh, they can do the payment for the OSD. We did engage with Correctional Services, and we're hoping that the plan that they presented to us will help them deal with this problem going forward. Then just looking at the departments that have spent less than 99% of their budget for the year, the first one will be the presidency, but the president is a very small department, so if they have few funded positions that they're not filling up, then they will register a, a large underspending, but this is mainly because of the vacant post. You have the Department of Communication where the spending was 98.1%, and basically this was as a result of the review of the cost delivery model for the digital um, television project. So if you do the review, then there's delays in the procurement of the system, and there's also some slow spending in the audiovisual strategy and the gazetting of the draft white paper on um, these policies. So that resulted in the underspending. Then you have the COCTA, where they registered the largest underspending, especially in terms of transfers, and this was because of the two billion that was withheld, and this is the grants to municipalities. So basically, chairperson and honorable members, what happens in terms of COCTA dispersing the money to the municipalities is that the municipalities have to apply and comply with the division of revenue provisions. If these municipalities don't comply, then COCTA can't transfer the money. So the 1.97 billion was basically them withholding the money until the municipalities um, adhere to these provisions, and as a result, then they will disperse the money. But there's always the, the issue of the timing because it takes long to comply. Therefore, the allocated money for the year sometimes is not transferred in full amount. So this was one of those of those um, reasons. And then the second one was basically the funds not being able to be transferred, and this was to the implementation agencies for the community works program. But all of these delays, we're working with the, um, the department. So the public finance team and the intergovernmental team work with COCTA to try and minimize this delay so that we can um, we can distribute the money to the municipalities, especially for those that need the money. Then you have international relations and cooperation where the spending was 97%. So while they overspend on their compensation, when you look at their overall budget, they didn't spend um, some of the money and this was because there was a delay in the procurement of the property that they wanted in New York, and this was due to irregularities with the appointment of the service providers. So um, Treasury has asked them to relook at the tender process and make sure that when they start the new tender, there are no irregularities and it complies with all the procurement regulations. So because they had to redo this tender as they, they are spending, therefore was only 97% of the allocated budget. Then just looking at the National Treasury, the underspending, or they only managed to spend 96.7% of their budget, and this was mainly um, due to delays in terms of paying for the Development Bank of Southern Africa. And we also had the rescheduling of the procurement of various services in terms of the IFMS project, and that resulted in the underspending. And the last com component that added to the underspending in the National Treasury vote was the lower than projected disbursements to the jobs fund partners. However, we did speak to the people responsible for the jobs fund, and they did come to present um, in the fit parliament on how they plan to fast track 
the disbursement of these funds and we will monitor that throughout the 2019-20 period and if we think they're still not performing the way they should and then we will intervene again. Then you have the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation where they only spent 91.3% but mainly that is due to vacant posts that they have that they can't fill as fast as they wanted to and also um, the delays in finding the new buildings because for now they're still stationed in the union buildings. You have police where, I'm sorry, public services and administration, DPSA, their understanding was due to vacant posts and they wanted to establish a government employee housing scheme where they house um, the housing scheme for the government employees and the delays in establishing that contributed to the understanding. Women compensation budget was the main contributor to the understanding but that was due to vacant posts. Women as a small department and um, uh, the president, as I said, sm small vacant positions can tweak the numbers. If you look at it in terms of rent value, the underspending amount was quite small. Then you have the big department, Department of Basic Education. The underspending, they, or they managed to spend just um, close to 99%, and this was because of the delays in receiving the invoices for the systems and also um, delays in invoicing by implementation agencies for the uh, school infrastructure backlog grants project. Uh, and also they introduce a much stringent verification of these invoices so that they don't pay invoices that they shouldn't be paying. So while they're trying to make sure they use the funds efficiently, that causes delays and as a result you see some underspending but it's not something that we worried about we do encourage the departments to be thorough in terms of looking at the invoices so that um they don't find they don't get audit findings but that has um, consequences as well then the department of health the main underspending there was in the national health insurance we did try to move some of the funds in um, during the adjustments budget from this grant uh, for the stimulus package that the president announced, but even moving these funds, they still were not able to fully spend the the national health insurance um, indirect grant, and this was as a result of late in, um, invoices, but also the changes in the tender system. Uh, the Office of the Chief Justice understanding there was mainly as a result of the delays. Uh, they wanted to, m to review their structure and also try to have a new structure that is more efficient and it caters to what they're supposed to do. But the delays in that meant they can't hire the people that they want to hire within the year, so that had some understanding. But also there were outstanding invoices for the Microsoft and e-filing softwares, but also there's, um, there were postponement of the judicial trainings. Police, 96.8% spending, and this was, so in a few years ago, um, the cabinet approved the, the implementation of the criminal justice system. Um, so in, in the system itself, they had seven points. However, the system was supposed to be for the whole justice system. So what tend to happen was that police used the, or they were housing the funds, and as Treasury, we did ask the police department that, look, these funds are not for the department only, these funds are for the entire cluster. So you have to come up with a plan on how you're gonna spend the funds within the cluster. So the, um, the allocation letter had um, conditions that you need to give us a new framework on how the entire cluster is going to spend the funds. So because that took long, it means the funds allocated for the criminal justice system were not used and that is the major underspending in terms of police. Agriculture, fisheries, and forestry, the main underspending was um, the failure to spend the 100 million, and this was allocated for the prevention and mitigation of disasters um, under the land use. But some of the, the, the money that was un underspent came from the high vacancy rate. You have some departments where the underspending is quite small, but I think the one that um, is important would be labor, where most of their uh, vacant funded posts were not filled, and these were 
exacerbated by the delays in invoices by different service providers in terms of procurement. So in general, honorable members and chairpersons, the, the main understandings in these departments were the ones that had high vacancy rates and others were trying to improve their procurement systems and as a result there were some delays there. Um, in the transport system, one of the differences compared to the other department was the delay in appointing or the appointment of the taxi scrapping administrator because we do have a taxi recapitalization program and we wanted to make sure that we appoint an administrator to, f to manage the process. So the delays in that resulted in some of the underspending. The water and sanitation, I think honorable members and chairpersons, you will uh, remember the VAL system that we're still trying to deal with and the understanding in that department um, was basically trying to generate some of the savings from the different projects so that we can use the money to fix or to deal with the Val River system. The main thing here is that the department does have money in the different grants, so we just needed to identify the savings and then reallocate the funds um, to, to the Val River system project and they also had some slow filling of vacancies. Now, Chairperson, just this one is just the last one where it explains the small departments, but most of this, as I said, is because of invoicing and, and um, the filling of posts. Now, for the committee, I think what is important for, for you to note and what this team is asking you to, to assist with would be the following department. So the, the defense department, we are really worried about their overspending on compensation of employees. So basically, they're spending three billion above what they allowed to spend. We have been engaging with the, def um, the defense department and we asked them to come up with a plan on how they plan to gradually move into the ceiling that was identified and how they will have to deal with the large numbers because currently there are about 75,000 people in the defense force but if they have to fall within the ceiling it means they have to be less than 70,000 people. So they need to come up with a plan on how they deal with um, the excess, it's not excess staff per se, but how are we gonna deal with this? So I think during the course of the year, what we will be doing as Treasury is engage with the plan that they will put forward, and then we will come and report quarterly on the progress that we make on um, helping the Defense Force to, to come within the ceiling. And then the second one would be the police, as I explained with the um, CJS, the seven point plan. We need these guys to really come up with a plan on how they're going to spend this money and in terms of the cluster rather than the police itself. And we will be monitoring that for the course of the year because you can't have underspending, especially for police where there's, there's such a need for, for the budget and we don't want to move the budget to other sectors because we understand there is a greater need for um, police or the security cluster as a whole. Um, to have the, this budget. Then you have the Agri DE fund, and this amount was transferred to the land bank, and the whole purpose there was to, to, um, to make sure the, the blended financing so that it accommodates a wider number of farmers rather than just um, giving it grants. So we're trying very hard to, to monitor that and make sure that these funds are directed to disadvantaged um, black emerging farmers. So that's one project that um, we're looking at. And we also have some of the restitutions and land reform programs that are very slow and we need to work with the department to try and fast track those so that um, they achieve the, the intended uh, pr programs. And we do, we do advise these departments, it's just that sometimes the procurement issues um, tend, to, tend to take longer than um, expected. So for the administrative services, the department that we would like to bring to your attention would be the Department of Home Affairs. 
where they reported an authorized irregular expenditure of 2.4 million as at end of um, March 2019. And this was mainly due to non-compliance with supply chain management um, regulations and interest charge on overdue payments. We, they did come and apply for a viament, but the viament was a combination of the over the overtime staff and this. We only approved the viament for the compensation, but for this viament, we said the department did not comply. Therefore, it would be very difficult for the treasury to justify why we would we would condone such a behavior. So this we would show in their financial statement as. Um, irregular and unauthorized expenditure, then they will have to come and report to Parliament on how they plan to deal with this. Um, we also had um, DECO where we are asking them to look at the missions that they have overseas. They must make sure that while the missions are important to have, but given the, the funding that we have, or lack of funding that we have as the state, they need to rationalize all of these and just try and um, be effective. Because there's no reason to have in each country in Europe a office, for example. You can just have one central office and then the other countries report in that one office. So we're helping them rationalize their missions. And then um, the National Treasury as I said, Chairperson and Honorable Members, if we see something that we, we're picking up even from our own um, department, we do come and report so that you can hold um, the Accounting Office of the Treasury um, uh, responsible. But here, basically, what we're looking at is the Department of Women, where they have been struggling to fill the core program or the vacant post in core programs. So we need to try and help them. But with the new um, reorganization and the new functions that they've got, we hope that um, the skills will be transferred as well and this pro problem may be dealt with. Um, in terms of Treasury, as I said before, the IFMS um, spent only 41.8% of its total budget F as at 2018-19. So um, the underspending was mainly due to the rescheduling of the procurement of various services. But we did engage with the Treasury to say that, look, for the year, we understand that there were delays. But for the coming year of 1920, you need to deal with the delays and make sure that you fast track the, um, the, the services and your procurement systems. And um, we also had to look at the budget for communications and a total allocation of 187 million was transferred by this department to the SAPC. I'm um, chairperson in the in the afternoon session we will also deal with um, some of the state owned companies that um, require funding but for now what we have done for the year um, 2018 19 we just transferred 1.87.4 um, million and I think I did speak a lot about um, the the statistics say overspending um, in terms of urban Dr. said, can I interrupt you? Um, there are some technical terms that you, you, you use. Can you take us along? For instance, you talk about variants. Variants, exactly what does it mean? And so on, or that if you come across such things, eh, which oh, you know which uh, sorry, belongs, belongs to that. Mm? <laughs> I'm saying sorry, Chairperson, yeah. we're so used to the talking technical. I'll, I'll yeah, do my just, best. Just remember that you see, if I know if nurses talk and they start using their things, we won't understand them. So. Uh, take other people along. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I will definitely try. Um, in terms of event development and infrastructure, the big project that we want the committee to have a look at or to monitor would be the Val River um, system. J just ex explain environment because we have used Oh, it so environment chairperson is basically moving money from goods and services to transfers or moving money from compensation to transfers or from transfers to compensation. So what, 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 what we use the environments for 
is for the department. So when you start the year, the departments give us a plan, but during the course of the year, things change and they start realizing that they might not achieve the expected spending. So between July and the rest of the year, we allow the departments to move funds to programs where they under budgeted from the programs where they over budgeted. So it's just trying to, to, to to help them adjust their budget so that they don't come to underspending at the end of the year. Okay. So for the Department of Water Affairs, I think what we want the, the committee to monitor would be the VAL system, but also chairperson and honorable members, um, the, um, the War on Leaks project in terms of the Department of Water and Sanitation has showed a lot of overspending and this is resulting in overall overspending of the goods and services. So that project, so what they did was the department came to ask to move money from compensation of employees to do the war on leaks. Now the, the project itself was already found to be irregular by the Auditor General. So Treasury could not condone the irregular expenditure to move the funds into this project. So the department is overspending on the project and I think they will have to come and report on how they plan to, to, to deal with the overspending in the, so the department will we will monitor it, but it's difficult, Chairperson and Honorable Members, because this is a commitment that the Department has. But if the Auditor General finds that it's irregular, then it becomes difficult for Treasury to even condone spending towards something that is irregular. So the Department has to conclude on the war on leaks and come up with alternative ways to do this training. Because basically, war on leaks project is trying to train artisans to help in the in the department, especially in terms of monitoring and fixing of dams and things and sanitations. But we have other institutions like your CETAs that um, provide training. So we ask the department, instead of housing this, because it's costing you a lot of money and you already have overspending, why can't you look at other alternative systems that already exist that can come and provide the same service? So that's what we told them to do. We will come back and report to you if that's what they've been doing during the course of the year. And then in the health department, I think the biggest worry that we have would be the spending on NHI um, grant, as I explained in the previous slides. So person and honorable members, these are some of the key issues that we think uh, we might need assistance from the committee in, to monitor them. We do speak and engage with the departments on a weekly basis, but some of these things take time to do and um, sometimes we get a bit frustrated because the system is very difficult to maneuver, but we do work with the departments, but sometimes we might need your help in terms of um, calling the departments to come and account for some of the spending patterns that the team is picking up to be um, problematic. So, Chairperson, that is me. Thank you so much. Um, before we proceed, we, we have just received Apologies from the Minister of Finance, from the Deputy Minister, and from the Director General. Uh, the Deputy Minister, the Director General, may, may, may join us uh, in the afternoon. Honorable Members, thank you very much. Uh, here's the story. Um, can I hear you? Okay, uh, and uh, um, you'll be noting the questions. The questions. Um, and, and as I, I said, please start by um, mentioning your name uh, for the benefit of the team. Um, remember. Thank you very much, Chair, <clears throat> and thank you for the presentation. Um, I'm going to ask you please to remember that we are newish members or new, very new members and we need to get used to your style and uh, some of your technical references as well. So some of our questions may seem a little bit simplistic, but I think it's important to, um, to delve into the matters and, 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 and kind of set a, set a precedent going forward. So my, my first question is, is... Before the question, I remember... I beg your pardon. My name is Dennis Ryder, uh, NCOP member. Um, 
The first question is a very straightforward one. I see that it's for quarter four spending. Um, I'm just wanting to ask, is this a cumulative year-to-date figure that you were, you're reporting on? Are these cumulative year-to-date figures that you're reporting on? Which makes this quite an important presentation. I've noted the nods, uh, Chairperson, thank you. So, so the fact that these are, are cumulative quarter on quarter is quite important. Um, I noted that there's a theme throughout uh, of delayed invoicing uh, being used as an excuse. Now, in terms of the standard charter of accounts, I think, you know, where expenditure is incurred within a period, that is more an accounting issue that can be fixed once those invoices come through, or other invoices uh, not forthcoming or having the wrong dates on, et cetera, et cetera, because delayed invoicing, uh, slow to invoice shouldn't be the problem because that gets fixed up uh, at a later stage. So if you can just indicate if a lot of those, these issues are going to go away once the invoices are in fact received. Um, I also wanted to ask, please, you have some, some interesting, um, uh, what are they called, abbreviations or, or, or things like uh, on, on slide 15, you have an RYM, which I be, I'm sure is an intra-yearly, but you haven't told us what it stands for. Uh, some of those are, are quite difficult to work out. Others are easy, so where it says SABC, please don't, don't, don't worry about that. Or, but uh, but uh, if you can give us a little bit of a clue, I think, I, I think also on the next slide there's an IFMS of the National Treasury. Um, maybe you can just give us a clue of those things, uh, certainly in presentations going forward until we get used to, again, your style. Um, I think it's important uh, to ask the question, you know, underspending and overspending can sometimes be a good thing and it can sometimes be a bad thing. And particularly with underspending, if you underspend but you meet all of your targets, uh, it's actually a good thing. So I think it's quite important for you to indicate for us as well, uh, especially now with, uh, since these are quarter four, uh, figures uh, that we're getting, Chair. Uh, important for us to note as well, in terms of the underspending, how ma uh, you know, the percentage target that was met by the department, if that's available. Obviously, I know that the departments are still finalizing and they're still doing their, their uh, or giving us an indication of, of, of how their performance has been. But certainly, if a department is meeting its targets and underspending, I think that should actually be, be lauded instead of, 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 of targeted. Um, I did note with concern that a number of the underspending departments are the key departments that we look on look to for service delivery. So, so COGTA, I know, is in the news at the moment because they're only getting 9% of the National Treasury budget, et cetera, et cetera, um, and crying for more, and there's a report that uh, local government is un underfunded. Coming from uh, un uh, local government, I must agree. Um, but now to see that this underspending in COGTA is quite concerning, especially when one sees that a lot of that has got to do with um, uh, disbursement of special grants, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm quite worried about, about some of those things, and perhaps uh, we, we need to, as a group, Chair, get some guidance as to how deeply we delve into these issues. I think, you know, as, as Treasury uh, and, and, and appropriations, we have... Uh, um, you know, we have the potential to go into each department and tell them exactly how they should be doing their business. So, for example, with, uh, w with, with Water Affairs, I've got some good ideas about, about what they should be doing uh, and doing things differently. Uh, War on Leaks as well is a particular one. You know, why not link that with uh, um, um, uh, public, works as, as, uh, public works projects? But, uh, you know, is that really our mandate to start looking at that, or do we merely look at it from an appropriations point of view? from a cold point of view like that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, again, basic education. The comments about health actually leave me cold. The fact that uh, we're not getting any spending on, 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 on mental health issues. Uh, you know, Isidomeni was a tragedy that killed a number of people, but it certainly didn't kill off all of our mental health patients. So the fact that there's no spending there, I think is important. And Chair, I think it, it, it would be most useful to us if we could work out what, um, uh, what, are, what tools are there in our, in, in our toolbox that we can use to try and enforce and make sure that these departments are doing the spending. I think, you know, do we have an opportunity, and I think we should, and I'm going to ask for the opportunity to call the health department in to the appropriations committee and ask them what's going wrong. 
Why are you not performing? And so I think it's important that we as a committee have the ability to, to, to summon these other departments and, and, and make them to give account here to us um, because seemingly going through the administrative channels is not always happening uh, and not having the desired effect. Those, Chair, are my opening questions, but I do want to appreciate the, the presentation again. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson, uh, colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am Zolam Lenzana uh, from the ANC. Uh, I am in the Standing Committee on Appropriations. Chair, let me start by uh, <coughs> welcoming, though I know, at a particular point, you as the co-chairs will consider <coughs> this uh, view of uh, a workshop so that uh, we are all uh, on par. We, we don't have to take a decision now. Uh, it will be too spontaneous for us to just shoot. Uh, the, 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 the second one, Chair, would also be to, to, to welcome the remedial actions uh, that uh, National Treasury is putting forward. Uh, I think we also have to apply our minds and see how best to, to implement in the light of uh, the fact that uh, Good doctor is uh, consistent in saying uh, oversight over. We came back when the process was restarted, which is when Treasury said the turnaround strategy that is being presented by SABC does not meet our funding requirements. They raised concerns, and as the department ourselves, we had raised concerns on certain things. I'll, I'll, when the presentations are made, the DGs, we will talk to that and, and the DGs is responsible. Which is why we then said, we've got to act, and acting meant that we must seek external support. Hence, we contracted the GTEC to come and assist SABC to be able to develop a responsive turnaround strategy that must give confidence not only to, to advertisers, not only to, to people who are listening to SABC, but to government and everyone that in the next five years or three years, SABC will not come back and ask for a bailout. That's very crucial because we're talking about the taxpayers' money here. And as I talk about a bailout, we do know that government has specific processes. It doesn't matter if you require 10 cents or 6 billion. We have to follow everything as we have approved those regulations and legislations. It doesn't mean now when we're in a tight corner, they must then be undermined because we feel a pressure. We all agree in government that SABC has to be bailed out, as I said, for the interest of the public, not for the interest of the shareholder, the board members, or the executives and everybody in SABC but for the interest of the public to ensure that their mandate of educating, informing, and entertaining the people of South Africa is realized, which is why we will be meeting once more. The Minister of Finance has given a directive to his DG to work with the DG of Communications and everybody from SABC, as we have been doing. We, when we, we delegated certain people from the department, we made sure that they interact with SABC on a weekly basis to say, this is what is required. Have you submitted? What is it that we don't have? Including when Treasury said the certain conditions that we must meet and the department had to be the one that says, Treasury, on behalf of SABC, we commit ourselves. And therefore, but for us to make such commitments, Treasury wanted certain conditions to be met, which is why we continued to engage with SABC as we continue to do so in the interest of SABC, trying to make sure that our SABC is properly funded and most importantly, is properly capacitated for the future and be responsive in the fourth industrial revolution that we're talking about. There's a meeting scheduled already 
on Thursday with the DG of Treasury, as I said, the Minister has instructed or directed the DGs to meet. I am highlighting this because it's one of the things that already on current affairs everybody gets to talk about on SABC. But in terms of the actual plans of what they'll be doing, the APP is clear to, 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 to give information on that. One of the critical things again is on digital migration, Chaperson, which is a project that since 2008 we've been talking about as government. That as the country we need to migrate on the broadcasting side from digital to analog and back to digital to digital after that. And we have experienced lots of changes and challenges in the project. Everybody talks about the cost to communicate, the need to make sure that data costs fall, and everybody links that with spectrum. And the spectrum we're talking about needs to be freed from the migration process that we're talking about. As we engaged with the newly appointed board of SABC, those are the first things that we identified, that we've got to have SABC, because we believe that also sustainability of SABC relies on those, because SABC has to respond to the challenges. If you go to certain stats now, you'll find that actually YouTube is the biggest driver of news, and that is being followed by people. So how do we make sure that our public broadcaster is able to exploit that opportunity, but most importantly because through the digital migration process, we want to increase the channels from the four that we have, but we're going to in increase them incrementally to say, we're going to add four now, sport channel, add and add and add, to increase in terms of content development, to make sure that as, as we talk of content development, people are given a diversity on the news, but most importantly, SABC is able to, like other broadcasters, able to respond to the challenges of the day. So it is in our interest, that's why I said we will be making interventions, and of course, for now, I won't be announcing all those interventions, but I'll be spoiling my budget vote speech. Details of that will then be given there. We are here today to present the APPs. So I was just talking to the issues that are there. The APPs are here uh, with your permission, um, Chairperson, as we're going to start with the Department of Communications in terms of the presentation, appreciating all those that have reported about because they're in the public space. I will then hand over to the Acting DG of Communications to talk to, to the APP. And of course, even the APP that we're talking about is one that had to be responsive to the country's <coughs> priorities as defined by President Ramaphosa, that alignment, of course, not ignoring NDP and the other things that have been in place in relation to the work that's been done by the Department of, Com of Communications. Jay, can we be given a quick opportunity to ask the Minister questions? Before we move to the APP, I think she's made some views <coughs> here. She's given us some very serious information. I know that the department will give more technical aspects, but she's given a more political, if I will, uh, presentation. So can we be given a quick opportunity just to ask her as a minister some questions, and then we'll go into the APP and the technicalities. <coughs> Program, I think just now, let's have a presentation. We'll, we'll tell them the same. You can focus on the minister when we finish the presentation on the department. I mean, you see yourself 10, there are a lot of, you will do it. Uh, just note, and then when we come to that part, you will. Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you, Minister. Uh, we have the APP for the period 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022. Uh, this is uh, the page on uh, table of contents. The, what is important here is the alignment to SONA and MTSF priorities. That is the one of the things that we had to align ourselves uh, on. Then, uh, for the purposes of the committee, just need to remind the committee that we, as the department, were required to produce and table the annual performance plan, including the projections for further two years consistent with the MTEF period. Uh, as we said, we have actually 
develop this 1920 annual performance plan <coughs> through our strategic planning workshop with our senior managers as well as engagement with our state-owned companies and entities such as your ICASA. Uh, one of the things that we also did, we had extensive engagements out between ourselves as the Department of Communications with Department of Telecoms and Postal Services and we identified areas wherein we can work together in the, in, during this fiscal year to ensure that there is alignment and synergy uh, on our respective APPs. So this uh, APP of, of, uh, we is a, actually has three strategic goals and is supported by, three, by seven strategic objectives. And as the department, we are committed to 18 annual targets uh, across the four departmental programs that we have. Our mandate is, as on the slide four, is uh, we have a vision to be a vibrant and sustainable communication services for an informed citizen and positive image of South Africa. Uh, our mission, create an enabling environment for provision of inclusive communication services to all South Africans in the manner that promotes social economic development and investment through broadcasting new media, print media, and other technologies and brand, uh, can, and, and brand the country locally and internationally. Our values, certainty of the policy environment, people-centered, quality standards of products and services, integrity, responsive, and, uh, and innovation. You will appreciate here there are still elements of print media and there are issues, uh, elements of brand because this is a part of the five-year plan that was there before on our vision and mission. Uh, on our strategy and outcome orientated goals and objectives, the one that we're going to look at is the, we're going to look at the one on goal one, effective and efficient strategic leadership, governance and administration. And then we have there as to ensure departmental compliance with statutory requirements and good governance practices. The next one is repurposing the state-owned companies and agencies to improve efficiencies and uh, service delivery and go to a responsive <coughs> communications policy and regulatory environment. Here we have improved universal access to broadcasting services and information by all citizens in 2019. On SO 1.2, you will note that that one and the, the one above it, uh, actually the all three are aligned to that one of DTPS because of, of the alignment that we had to do. We have goal three, uh, transformed uh, communication sector, support the growth and development of the creative industries by 2019, ensure the country migrates from analog uh, to digital broadcasting by 2021, forge partnerships with relevant stakeholders by 2019. And then we have our plans that are on page one, page eight, the 2019-2020 priorities. Improve universal access to broadcasting services and information, that is the first priority. What is involved there, we are required to develop and implement content strategy we will be undertaking a, a broadcasting amendment a bill and we will ensure that uh, the, there is an operational project management office to support the Pro presidential commission on fourth industrial revolution. The broadcasting digital migration, Minister spoke on this one. Uh, here, what we'll be doing this year, we'll be reviewing the delivery model in order to accelerate the release of the radio uh, frequency spectrum. Then on thirdly, on the priorities, we have the ICT, SMME, and enterprise development. One of the things that we do is to we we'll be doing is implementation of the audiovisual SMME program, focusing on 4 IR skills and enterprise development, facilitation and coordination of access to digital platforms for the audiovisual uh, SMMEs. These we conduct workshops in, vir in various provinces. We've already done two thus far in order to realize this uh, program that is focusing on SMEs. Next slide is on our international engagements. On this one, uh, the number four and number five, we're actually working hand in hand with the Department of uh, Telecommunications and, and, and postal, uh, postal Services. 
because, as Minister said, for instance, on the ITU, because we are responsible for, for DTT and, and uh, Department of Telecommunications and Postal Services is responsible for, uh, for, high, for, for broadband uh, spectrum, we will be working together to do the development and advancement of the Republic of South Africa position paper for ITU World Radio Conference 2019. And we will develop an advancement of uh, South Africa's position for BRICS ICT ministerial meeting. Also, it will be in 2019. Securing of two partnerships, partnership programs towards development of YR in South Africa. Support South Africa's chairship of the AU. On SOC governance, we will be undertaking a repurposing of SOCs and agencies to improve efficiencies and service delivery. Next slide 10. On the alignment of the, of the commitments, to aligning them to SONA, we, for this current financial year, we will focus on small and medium enterprise and create market access. And then this is priority one in terms of MTSF to transform the economy to serve uh, the, the people. So the commitment that we are doing, it will be appointment of local installers <coughs> to accelerate a broadcasting digital migration rollout. And then uh, the second one on SONA commitments, develop uh, programs to ensure that economically excluded young people are work ready. This is through the skills program that we are doing, which is on our APP commitment, implementation of the audiovisual SMEP program, focusing on 4 skills and, and enterprise development, facilitation and coordination, coordination of access to digital platforms for the audiovisual SMEs. This is what we're committed to this year. Then um, on solar commitment, which is building a capable and developmental state, this is uh, aligned to MTSF uh, for this period, strengthen governance and, pub governance and public institutions. Our commitment is to ensure our state-owned entities adherence to good governance and financial stability, repurposing of the state-owned entities and agencies to improve efficiencies, efficiency and service delivery. And then on the other social, the other SONA commitment is social co cohesion, which is linked to priority five, build, build national unity and embrace diversity. This, uh, our commitment is coordination of the planning and monitoring of outcome 14 by state-owned entities with emphasis on sub-outcome 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is fostering constitutional values, equal opportunities, inclusion, and readiness, uh, and redress, promoting social cohesion across society. Uh, and then the next one, building a better Africa. South Africa, that is priority six, which is South Africa and the world. The, here, our, our APP commitment is to engage in this engagement of on, on multilateral structures of IT, which is International Telecommunications Union and Repo, and also the position paper that we committed to before. Uh, that is the APP commitment that we will be doing for this current uh, financial uh, year. And then on program one, program one is mostly uh, administration. These are the kinds of things that we'll be doing and that includes ensure compliance with statutory requirements of and, and good governance practices. The things that will be happening, reconfigure department <coughs> to deliver on its mandate, the minister spoke at length about that, facilitate the implementation of approved work, workplace skills plan in line with the reconfigured department's mandate. We have time, time frames that are aligned to that. Uh, we want to ensure that we keep an unqualified audit outcome on the 2018-2019 uh, annual financial statements and uh, ensure that 100% of our of compliant invoices are paid within 30 days. Uh, implementation of the procurement plan with focus on enhancing industry transformation and youth economic inclusion. Uh, this one we aligned with what we'll be doing as well with DTPS. Uh, strategic risk assessment conducted and risk register updated. Four progress reports on strategic risks, 
and uh, uh, strategic risk mitigation complied. Then we move to program two. Program two is uh, the responsive communication policy, a regulatory environment, and improved cadre branding. This, uh, as you will see, we have performance indicators. As I said earlier, we have to plan also for the years, for the upcoming years after 1920. So we have targets there as the audio, audio, visual, and digital content uh, act needs to be implemented. Uh, and then we will have for this current financial year audio, visual, and digital content strategy developed for the for the FYR. And next uh, financial year we have implementation of audio, visual, and digital content strategy. And then the 2021-2022 will still have the implementation of the audio and digital content strategy impact that we are foreseeing is improve universal access to broadcasting services and uh, information by all citizens. And then we have a program to operational uh, project management office to support the presidential commission on 4IR. So in 2019-20, we want to have a PMO established and operationalized to support the presidential commission on fourth industrial revolution. And then the year after that, we say provide support the Presidential Commission on the FYR through the PMO the following year, the year after the 2021-2022, the same will be done. And then the impact building a capable project management office to support the FYR Commission. Program two is to have a responsive communications policy, um, regulatory environment, uh, environment and branding, which is still the same. The things that we'll be doing as an indicator is the Broadcasting Amendment Act that needs to be implemented. Uh, we want to ensure that this year the Broadcasting Amendment Bill is tabled before the House and is finalized. And then 2020 to uh, 2021 and 2021 to 2022 will be monitoring and we'll make sure that we have monitoring reports on the implementation of the Broadcasting Amendment Bill. And it's similar to 2021 and 2022, the impact improved universal access to broadband services and information by all citizens. Why is this bill, why is this important? It is important that we monitor the, 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 the compliance with the amended bill once it's, it's, it's approved and signed off by the president. Because we have noted that in prior years, there were issues around the Broadcasting Act as it stands that were not complied with. Next slide. Next slide will be transformed communication sector. Ensure the country migrates from uh, analog to digital by 2021. We have here analog transmission services switched off in all provinces by 2021, subject to sufficient funding. Uh, review and implementation of the revised uh, model is what we have already committed to this year, and then the following year we have implementation of the revised delivery model in the identified provinces. Then the, at the year 2021-2022, implementation of the revised delivery model in the identified uh, provinces. What is the impact? The impact is spectrum is released and used to, the extent, to extend mobile communication uh, on, on their services. So you will see with this one, we have a, a, a provider that says it's subject to sufficient funding uh, because this, 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 uh, this, this performance indicator is not adequately uh, uh, funded. We have a BDM consumer awareness and education uh, plan, which is implemented. So even currently this year, the team is, really, is, is, is busy with the BDM awareness and education plan. Uh, so each and every year, that's what they do so that end users are, are able to know what is the what is the services that they'll be getting under the DTT uh, program. And then I move to slide, uh, I think it's, it's 16. The slide 16 is still continuing with the uh, transform communication center. You will see we're talking about on the performance indicator is the audiovisual SMME program focusing on fire art skills as uh, indicated this, this, the, the, this year and the years are following, we are running out a, pro a, a program in different provinces to ensure that producers and people that develop content for the audiovisual uh, space 
are, are, are capacitated to know what is it that they are supposed to do. As you know, uh, for IR is more, when, it's, when we're talking about the content side, it's about video. So that is the training that we are doing across all provinces. Then we say access to digital platforms for the audio, visual, SMME uh, to be coordinated. We f our role is to make sure that we facilitate and coordinate of access to digital platforms for the SMME or, or, or uh, SMME in the audiovisual uh, space. So this is what we do, and we'll be doing it for the next uh, three financial years. And then program uh, still program three number of mandatory multilateral structures engaged to advance communications or broadcasting positions, development and advancement of uh, South Africa's position paper for BRICS, ICT ministerial uh, meeting in 2019, uh, then 2020-2021, additional multilateral structures engaged uh, jointly with the DTPS. So moving to the next financial years, we'll be doing this jointly with the DTPS. And the impact is to um, Enabling an uh, enabling environment for investment established locally and internationally, and then uh, the next one, uh, a performance indicator, number of uh, RSA positions developed uh, jointly with DTPS. Same similar. This is for the World Radio Conference 2019, which will be held in Egypt. Development and advancement of the <coughs> South Africa's position paper for the International Telecommunications World Radio Conference. And then the following year, we intend to have an outcomes report of the International Telecommunications Union World Radio Conference 2019 in order to develop a national radio frequency band. And this will be doing jointly with the PS. And then in 2021, 2022 implementation of the ITU World Radio Conference 2019 resolution. Then on program four, have this one which talks about it's more about uh, uh, leadership governance and administration of its own about entities so here I'm going to say number of quarterly performance review sessions coordinated because now our entities have have, have been reduced we intend to have 12 uh, state owned entity quarterly uh, performance review sessions uh, on the 12 on an annual basis up until 2021. <coughs> Why are we doing this? The impact to ensure that the uh, improved capacity of the entities to deliver on their mandate. Number of performance reviews and compliance monitoring reports of the state owned entities developed is the same, same number. It will be 12 performance reviews and compliance and monitoring reports of SOEs uh, uh, to be developed. So that's what we'll be doing. The next slide will move into the financial uh, financial information. I'm on slide 20. Uh, this is currently the allocation on slide 20 of the programs within the department. As you can see for the year, because we've done for the current financial info administration communication, Industry and, 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 and industry and capacity, that's being entity oversight. This is the entire budget that the actual Department of Communication has been appropriated for this current financial year. And then for the next two financial years, is what project should be uh, uh, allocated. Of importance uh, is, is, is the next uh, slide, which is on, 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 on point one. You will see there is compensation of. of of employees, but out of the total budget, there's a compensation of, of <coughs> employees and transfers and subsidies, uh, and ensuring that we pay uh, for the as capital assets that we have. And then the uh, last slide, you will notice Minister Spokes said that the, this, on the, on, the, on the latter part of the slide, we have we're still transferring funds to GCIS and MTTA and brand, and, and, brand as, and brand South Africa. That is, on, on top of that, we have the Freeman Publication Board, CASA and SAPC. Those are the transfers that we project for 2021, 20, uh, up until 2022. For this current financial year, that is what has been uh, uh, allocated to the respective entities. Uh, Chairperson, uh, with your permission, uh, I am done with the presentation. Uh, thank you very much.
<coughs> well, what we'll do now, we'll have um, um, comments and questions on the first presentation, then we'll move to the second one. <coughs> Member Fandame, where is she? Well, 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 the train is moving. Somebody needs to quite I don't know whether she thought we were going to do the two of them and then do after. What do you such suggestion? We do one of all of them. All right, and then members note and then you can indicate which areas you want. I think that will help. Yes. Or else what do you think they should engage you on? engage on the first one? What's yes. What is your what is your thinking members? Yeah, I, I think we should uh, combine, uh, for, for the sake of time, uh, combine both the presentation by the minister and the, and the department if there are questions, <coughs> that are questions. Thank you, Chairperson. We will have uh, the DG responsible for telecommunications and postal services making a presentation and, of course, in alignment with the priorities set out by the governing party and, and the president on the priorities of making sure that we, we, we build a digital society through providing broadband to all. Uh, the DG will be talking to the projects that we're doing as we have a broadband plan that we're rolling out as the country which is called SA Connect. And crucial to the work that we're doing, you will remember, I'm talking about these ones that are also in the hearts of the people, the, 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 the post office being the center of the, of the distribution of the social grants. And people have raised concerns at times to say, here we did not get our grants, here we got them, but here, here are the challenges that we're facing. And as President uh, mentioned in his State of the Nation address uh, response, he did mention that we've covered so much ground and of course when the entities come, the, the, the responsible entity will, we are, will unpack the numbers. But we are trying to work closer as, as, as the department with all the entities under the portfolio of DTPS in ensuring that especially the key priorities of government are well looked after and crucial to that is ensuring once more of the fact that all the entities, they comply with good governance, we will Remember that one of the key things that we've seen in the country that now we have said as we work towards the development of the shareholder compacts, we've got to make sure that we do an analysis of the entity in relation to the state capture, in relation to other corruption activities that have been mentioned, <coughs> the ethics, integrity of the people that we employ or deploy in those entities. So those are the things that we said as part of providing support in ensuring that our implementing agencies, which are the entities, they are aligned to the broader framework and priorities of, of, of government. The, the DG will talk to that. I mentioned broadband rollout, and I will talk about the post bank, the corporatization, as, as it has been pronounced. You will know those that were here, that we came and made the presentations. The bill was then sent to Parliament. The DG will, will make full focus on that. Of course, in terms of contributing towards the growth of the economy and putting the SMM is at the center. Uh, President at times talks about the innovation centers, at times talks about the township uh, economy that we need to build. And as the department we had, as you know, members of the parliament have read about it, that we produced our ICT SMM strategy that will be going throughout the year in terms of implementation. Crucial to the work that we're doing is ensuring that we put South Africa and its people at the center. Because as we talk about technologies, everybody just think about the consumption levels. Ours is to say, how do we reshape and refocus the sector and the country to play a positive role, not just towards uh, GDP, but also towards the African uh, continent and the world. Therefore, prioritizing the local technologies produced in South Africa is a priority. Hence, we talk about the SMME strategy that must talk to all the components that the DG will talk about. Uh, we have the centers, as you know, through USASA, the rollout that has been done, so they'll be taking us through how to work towards coordinating. I said it has been 25 years, and in these 25 years we have learned, like any other 25-year-old, how we've been working that the other entity does this and it contradicts what the other entity wants to do in the same portfolio as the department, as the main shareholder, we have said these are the broader, broader priorities 
as we take you from what uh, President Ramaphosa has announced, and that to say the department is how we're going to respond to those priorities, and therefore the entities must act accordingly based on their mandates. And of course, the issues of, of, of the legislative uh, reviews will come on board, as DOC also highlighted that. The regulators that we have from this side, we have FPB, no, no, we have, um, we have done that now, which is the domain name authority. Members, I know you do have your private email addresses, and most of you love .com. We want to plead with yourselves to make sure that the money that we spend in this country get to be spent here and contribute to the GDP. When we talk about the politics or the economics of the domain name registration, your email addresses, because we want data to fall, your government must incentivize, you must do this. But we take all this money outside South Africa and we come and complain about the lack of development of the sector, we complain about uh, jobs that are not there, but the money is how we spend. I don't want to talk to the applications and everything that we utilize. You have read uh, about, okay, at least now it's resolved, the Trump and Huawei issues. Can you imagine we, if one day Trump wakes up and says, I'm withdrawing Microsoft and Google from all other countries. What would happen to South Africa? So we have said as the department, we need to prioritize and remodel the department that it doesn't matter what may happen in the future, but we need to build our own capacity. So as I talk about the politics of the Dominion Authority, it applies to everything. All these gadgets that you say you have that are not produced here. How do you work together despite the political parties or the slogans that we chant, but trying to make sure that we put South Africa at the center because when South Africa is highly industrialized, people are able to get jobs, the economy booms, and then we can go and politic. But people of this country at least will feel safe and will be well looked after in terms of the economic opportunities that are there. We also spoke about the need to make sure that we build a digital skilled society. Because if we are talking about the fourth industrial revolution once more, that requires a multidisciplinary that even if you are a nurse, you must have a digital literacy skill that will help you be able to respond to the challenges and opportunities that are presented by the fourth industrial revolution. Hence, you will get into the details when we talk about NEMISA, which is a training institute under our department, that how we plan to reposition and make sure that we give access to the unemployed graduates, we give access to the matriculants that could not be accommodated at TVS and universities, but because they, they are South Africans too, and they deserve to be empowered, how do we then have bridged that digital skills gap by making sure that we provide them with the skills that they can have so that they can better advise government on, 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 on policies and therefore they'll be able to generate whatever income utilizing the knowledge that we have given to them. Uh, everybody has been talking about ETVM, this and that, and one of those key entities that is responsible to make sure that there's a good signal is Centec. They are here, they will unpack uh, their plan for, for the year to say how do you make sure that we build on the new technologies to make sure that people of South Africa do not uh, only get poor quality on the services that they are rendering, but we reposition them not only to respond to the South African challenges, but Africa as the continent, as they've already started building a footpath in Africa. And I want to say, honorable members, something that we don't talk about a lot, that they're doing very well. If you go to the continent, most people that will tell you of the entities that they've been able to even give business to. And fortunately, as they are given business to, they are not ones of those that are problematic too much in terms of the service they render. And we are working towards enhancing the work that they do. I will pause there for now. Others will come and the DJ will talk to the APP in terms of the priorities. I did say the priorities are broader, but we, what we're trying to do is to give direction to all the entities to say go and focus. We're responding to what Monga Media has spoken about, and therefore this is what we'll be doing. Thank you, uh, DJ. Thank you, Chair. And over to you, DJ. The Thank you, Minister. Uh, Chairperson, members, ministers, and colleagues, thanks one, once again for giving us this opportunity to present our annual performance plan for the Department of Telecommunications and Postal Services. I'm going to address uh, three broad areas. One is the alignment with the government priorities, and then go to the priorities for 
the year and address also the financial information. Now, Chair, as it has been indicated in the earlier presentation and in the Minister's opening system, statement, I mean, what we do when we plan as departments, we take into account the overall plan of, of government so that eventually what departments do as individuals form part of a big whole, which is the plan of the whole of the government. Now, we work in terms of the National Development Plan, which remains the vision of the government into the future. And out of the National Development Plan, we have what is called the nine-point plan, which is what we've been using. So the nine-point plans have been extracted from the National Development Plan. We go to Lihutla. Now, the presentation that we are going to make here marks the end of the five-year planning cycle of, of government. And as the Minister has indicated, we are beginning a new cycle into the sixth e administration. We do have our own internal e policies which are sector specific. We do e take that, them into account when we plan for the year. And also we take into account e ICT sector trends and of late, the fourth industrial revolution has been one of the biggest e issues of concern to the two, two departments and the sector as a whole. And of course, we have our own individual uh, targets as the department. Now, there's always a lot that you want to do given the kind of challenges facing the country, but we have to work within the confines of the available uh, resources that are allocated to us by National uh, Treasure. Uh, during the year, we go to Treasury and ask for quite a lot of money to do uh, all the things that we want to do, but they can only allocate so much. So we have to take that into account and also ensure that we can look after the allocated resources. Now, in terms of the strategic alignment, one of the key areas, one of the key focus areas of the department is that of developing legislation. So we'll continue with this path and develop new legislation. But before we can come with new laws this time around, we have to review the current policy so that we have a clear policy statement of what we want to do and informed by that policy statement, then we can revise the, the laws. And in this particular case, the review of the policy will be preceded by the work that is being done by the Presidential Commission on the Fourth Industrial Revolution, so that what comes out of the Commission must find expression in the work of, of government. So we are going to do that. Then acceleration of broadband rollout in South Africa we play a role as a government beside our policy and regulatory responsibility. We also run a project that is called SA Connect, and this seeks to connect schools, hospitals, clinics, police stations, home affairs, and so forth. So the project has started already. We are rolling out this project in partnership with some of our entities that are present here. And as has already been indicated, we need a comprehensive strategy to drive the digital transformation and the fourth industrial revolution. And in this regard, we'll focus on the implementation of the current national e strategy. The licensing of the radio, of the radio frequency spectrum chairperson is a very important e issue in South Africa. I guess it is the same even in other jurisdictions. Now, as we do so, we need to ask why do we license the radio frequency spectrum? And some of the reasons include ensuring competition, innovation, stimulating investment, transformation of the sector, and reducing the cost of communications. But then, as the Minister has also indicated, we don't work in isolation. We work with the other countries as part of the global family. So the radio frequency spectrum is played at the global level, and we participate in those processes. And as indicated, this year we'll attend the World Radio Conference, which happens every five years and it is responsible for the development of radio regulations that are used by all countries on earth. Then, in terms of the SOCs and agencies, we need to improve efficiency and service delivery. And as intimated in the opening statement, Chairperson, we know that the department is responsible mainly for policy making. A bulk of work that was supposed to be done, to be done by us has been delegated to the entities which means that entity oversight becomes one of the biggest responsibilities that we need to carry out as the, the department. So the regionalization of some of, of the entities 
and ensuring that there is effective oversight will also receive a prominence in our e planning and programs e throughout the year. Then on cyber security, we play a very big role on cyber security, chairperson with, of course, limited resources. We have what we call the cyber security hub, and means I wish to believe that one of the good days, members will visit the cyber security hub to see the work that we try to do. In this regard, we coordinate with the like of SABRIC, which is the banking institutions. Very important for us to coordinate with those kind of institutions. And that is going well so far, even though we have limited resources for this purpose. Then the issue of SMMEs has been indicated that we need to implement our strategy. We are amongst the first departments to go to cabinet with a clear SMME strategy in terms of what we want to do. Now, Chairperson, when you talk about SMME development, you realize that there are policy and non-policy instruments. So far, we're focused only on the policy instruments, and a lot of work still needs to be done there. But there are other bottlenecks that we need to address, and then including a funding that we will also attend to, uh, make reference to it later on. The massification of skills has been referred to, that we need to skill everyone in society. In fact, we are already behind in this regard, and we need to move a, a bit a faster. Digitization of government to improve efficiency and service delivery is also going to be one of our the priorities as the, the Department of Telecommunications and Postal Services. Now, going into very specific uh, areas of, the, of delivery, with regard to broadband, the Department will focus on the following. We will monitor the, the, the provision of broadband services in 570 sites. So these sites are already in existence. And, and as I said earlier on, this only speaks to the work that the department is doing. There is work that ICASA does to impose obligations on the companies to also roll out the broadband. The big companies, uh, including our state-owned enterprises, also are rolling their own e broadband. So this just speaks to a, a, a pushing of the work that we are doing with regard to broadband. We will also coordinate the rollout of broadband in 400 e sites. As indicated, this speaks to schools in the main, using the money allocated to the department. Then we'll also maintain the operations of the Rapid Deployment National Coordination Center. Chairperson, we've created this center within the department to coordinate the deployment of, of broadband. One of the biggest challenges facing the rollout of broadband, especially by industry stakeholders, that there are barriers to deployment that you will find in local government. So through this facility, we are trying to work with local government to remove those impediments so that the industry can roll out the infrastructure throughout the country. I've already mentioned the Cyber Security Hub that will continue monitoring its operations. Now, with regard to legislation, we're going to focus on the following. We have what we call the DF bill, that stands for the Digital Development Fund bill. So chair, currently we have USASA, which is Universal Service and Access Agency, and the Universal Service and Access e Fund, which are playing both funding and regulatory responsibility. And now with this bill is to streamline that so that we have a dedicated facility that focuses on the financial aspects of supporting in particular SMMEs. We will also attend to big data and cloud policy as it has been indicated. Now, Chairperson, this is a very big ask in terms of what we need to, to do as a department. It has already been indicated that we are in the data economy. So we need to make sure that we have the necessary policy that will ensure that within government there is interoperability and we can maximize the value of the data that we have. Issues around storage of data, where are we going to store government data is also going to be one of the issues to be looked at. The issue of CETA, CETA is a very important agency and it was mentioned earlier on that most of the time there are complaints about CETA. Now many black people, especially SMMEs who, which come to our department with respect to CETA, they will tell you that beside their own innovations, please help us to sell Cisco, CERT, that is what they are asking for. And when you look at the margins that they get, because all of them, all, most of the SMMEs, even those with capabilities to do their own things, spend most of their time having to sell, sell Cisco. That's all what they do. And the margins are very small. 
So the idea here is to move CETA into a new dispensation where it's going to enable local innovations. We are also going to work on the, on the state infrastructure company at two levels. One is to merge certain entities, but also as indicated earlier on, what we will need to do is to make sure that all state entities that are involved in, in broadband, one way or another, are coordinated as part of this initiative that we are working on. We made reference to the World Radio Conference, which is going to take place at the end of this year in Egypt. And the outcome of the radio conference will obviously inform the review of the National Radio Frequency Plan. So the, the NRFP stands for the National Radio Frequency Plan. Then we will also deal with the SMMEs is development strategy, just in chair to belabor this point. There are issues around capacity building, and when you go to the big companies and say, why are you not taking local SMMEs, you will always be told that they don't have capacity. So we want to attend to this matter, hopefully in partnership with the same big companies. Because chair doesn't help for a company, a big company, to say, we, stand, we spend 10 billion per annum on infrastructure only to find that what goes to SMM is less than 500 million. So we need to trace what actually happens in the value chain of what the big companies are saying that they are spending on SMM is, and that speaks to access to markets. There are serious barriers to entry for SMM is. Access to infrastructure is also very pertinent. Now on access to infrastructure, this does not only speak to SMM is in our portfolio. It also speaks to non-ICT SMEs. The President has already indicated that there will be hubs that are going to be created. A number of government departments are also establishing these <coughs> hubs. So our responsibility will also to make sure that SMEs outside of our portfolio use those hubs to access infrastructure. <coughs> uh, we also spoke in the LAP presentation by ADG of our international work. A chairperson will take our work is very seriously internationally. Because the nature of this industry, Chair, when you see us moving up and down, because it may arise one of the days, Minister, as to why are you always traveling, is that its nature is an international industry. So we have to attend quite a lot of, of meetings to an extent that we also place our own officials in some of the jurisdictions where discussions take place. We have an official base in Geneva full time so that he can be our, our eyes and ears whilst we are busy here. So we'll advance our position with regard to the World Radio Conference which will be approved by cabinet and so these are our positions as a country and we are engaging with the entire African planning area before we go to the World Radio Conference to ensure that there is a harmonization. The BRICS a <coughs> partnership is also a very important a priority for the department we have been participating, and as the minister might have indicated in one discussion, is that we can't just be attenders of the BRICS meetings. We are the smallest of the BRICS countries, and we must try by all means to extract the best we can extract from working with our partners. Of course, not cap in hand, but also bring some innovations and ideas in our engagement with the BRICS countries. On securing two partnership programs towards development of fire in South Africa, we do work with other countries and organizations and develop in partnerships and collaborations. And at present, we are playing a very big role in Africa and the region. We are chairing the <coughs> Committee on the Post-Industrial Revolution in, the, in, in SADC and also at the African 11. So we will need to strengthen that in participation. Support South Africa's chair chairship of the African Union. The President will be assuming this responsibility at, at the beginning of the, the year. So as the department, we need to also support that e process and, and, and come with programs that will support the South Africa's chairship of the African Union. Then uh, going uh, forward in terms <coughs> of a uh, national e strategy, approval and implementation of national digital skill strategy. Chairperson, we have worked on this uh, strategy. Initially, we did a gap analysis, and we've been working with other government departments. And one hopes that even if there are no ideas, this will not be streamlined or stopped, but then colleagues can add as we move uh, forward. 
and as has been indicated in the workshop that the minister has said, that this is not our strategy. It's a strategy of government. So it's not a departmental strategy. To an extent that if other government departments have new ideas as we move on, the best thing would be to enrich what has already been done, as opposed to saying that who must develop this strategy or not. So we hope that will go well. Develop a model for digital transformation of government. Government's uptake and usage of ICTs or digital technologies is very important in any country. If government lets behind, citizens have no incentive to use these technologies. So we will prioritize this. I've already indicated that the Presidential Commission will develop a plan which will later on inform our own policies. Development of framework for smart communities for South Africa. Chairperson, most of the time people talk about smart cities, but the issue is much more bigger than smart cities. It's about smart community, communities that we will need to develop. Now, communities are not the same, so we have to look at, it, at each and every area and develop a model where you can just click and say, I want to see a smart city model for South Africa. You can click any municipality, you know what we're going to do in terms of smart city. So that process is going to start in earnest and we'll be working with the local government to ensure that there is a single model for smart cities in South Africa. Then in terms of the SOC oversight, analysis <coughs> and submission of 28 quarterly SOC performance reports, we need to do this so that the reports that come to you must be processed by us. So they come from the entities having been approved by the boards, they come to us, but then the minister submit them to, to parliament. Now the issue goes much more beyond just analysis how we work with the entities to address areas of weakness. Because every time we analyze the reports, we always find that there are challenges. So we always bring that to the attention of the boards and the administration and the respective e entities. The corporatization of the post bank <coughs> is a very important pillar of this. Now, it, we have submitted an application, which is long overdue, it's with the recent bank. But we, the, the application could not be processed first because it was said that the Banks Act did not allow state entities to hold bank licenses. So we had to wait for the Banks Act to be amended. And we supported that process. It has been completed. Now the Banks Act allows state entities to can hold bank licenses. So part one has been done. What we're working on now is the model of ownership of the new bank that we told you about, the post bank. And as we do this, we have also asked the post bank and the post office to an extent to also start thinking about what are we going to do? Because it's easy for the minister to fast track the legislative aspects, only to find that when it comes to delivery, we don't have a strategy of how the bank is going to fit in a fast changing market. So maybe in future discussions or even the budget vote, the minister can expand on this so that it is, there is an appreciation that we're taking this matter seriously and we are align, aligning our innovations with the fourth industrial revolution. The repurposing of the agencies and, and SOCs I have referred to. Now repurposing will take a different forms. There will be instances where you merge, but there will be areas where you might not necessarily merge entities but repurpose them. So that in the case of the post office, even if it's not merged with any other entity, it still needs to be repurposed so that it can play a much bigger role in the fourth industrial revolution. In terms of the department's own uh, internal uh, processes, uh, Chairperson, we'll focus on the development and monitoring of our budget and the procurement plan according to our priorities, assessment of strategic risk and updating of the strategic risk register, which we do uh, most often, digitization of one additional departmental business process. As a department that's responsible for digitization and the fourth industrial revolution, we also need to move and, and lead by example. So chairperson within the limited available resources, we are beginning to digitize our own processes. Leave has been digitized in the department, even the submission of memos has been digitized. So we're looking for other uh, aspects of the work that we do to be included so that by the end of this year or in the, by the end of the MTF, we can talk about a department that is also digital minister so that we don't ask everyone to digitize but ourselves have a problem with digitization. So we are taking, we have started that in process and we'll allocate more resources for, for, for this. 
facilitating the implementation of approved workplace, workplace skills plan aligned to the mandate. Now, what we're doing here at Chairperson, every year we need a work, a work skills plan to support employees. But the way we're approaching it this time around is that we are approaching it with transition in mind. It has been indicated that even if you are a nurse, you need to have some digital skills. You need to manipulate the devices that we are talking about. So even within the department, we need to do that. So as we implement the current work skills plan, we must do that with the future now in, 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 in mind. Establishment of a reconfigured department to deliver on the new mandate that has been dealt with sufficiently. And this part also deals with that. And we will now move to <coughs> the, the finances. Now, Chair, similar to DOC, you will see that we get this money, 1.6 billion. And the bulk of the funds are transferred to the entities. Now, there are obviously entities that we don't give money. You know, they are generating money on their own because they are quasi-business entities. So if we were to account for the entire portfolio as to what is the total budget of the entire portfolio, this 1.6 billion is not a true reflection of this, the situation. It only speaks to the money that's appropriated from treasure. But there's a lot of money that the entities have on their own by nature of uh, doing a business. So when we have this money, it's allocated to administration, international affairs and trade, policy research and capacity development, ICT enterprise development and SOC oversight. So this will include the transfers to the entities. ICT infrastructure support, as you can see, this also includes the work that I referred to in the implementation of SA Connect. Now, over this time period, over a three-year period, it's clear that we will not get a significant increases in terms of the money that we need. And the minister indicated that the money for broadband will be addressed separately going forward. We are working with the Development Bank of Southern Africa to revise the delivery model for broadband. And the current indication from National Treasury is that we'll get initial one billion. That would be for broadband in addition to the money that we have allocated here. Then what we then do, you see in red the compensation of employees, goods and services. Those <coughs> refer to current e payments, which are indicated e across the three year cycle, and then transfers and subsidies, you can see chair, one, over a billion goes to the transfers, so it means that the department retains around 600 million for its own operations, and then payments and cap for capital assets, also that is uh, included in the budget. Then in terms of transfers and subsidies, the first one speaks to provinces and municipalities. The A is more about the licenses that we obtain for cars and other uh, consumables that we get from the provinces and the municipalities. Households, this one in particular refers to legal fees related to uh, the DGT project, which was initially was at uh, the Department of Telecommunications and Postal Services. So going down, there are the transfers that we give to the individual uh, entities. Chair, you'll see at the end that we give money to Centec. Now, this is very important, uh, and it tallies with what was said earlier on by the ADG, that if we don't have money to implement DTT, at the same time, we, are maintain, we will maintain the infrastructure that we are not using. So we are maintaining the infrastructure that we are not using, whilst waiting for the allocation for the other aspects of DTT. So this is very important for the com committee to appreciate that even as we are reviewing the model, there is already money that we are spending to fast track DTT to an extent that over 70% of the country has a digital signal that if you have that set of box, you can receive the signal already in the country. So, Chair, that marks the end of our presentation and together with the DOC, we are going to take questions, of course, led by the Minister and the DM. Thank you. Members, now with comments and questions, uh, we'll start with uh, Member Kubeka. Say bye-bye. All right, uh, this has been the agenda for this morning. We'll take a quick break. Thereafter, we take a look at the weather. It's a goodbye for me.
the story. My child, I have a great story to tell you. Although we come from humble beginnings, we've done legendary things. South Africa have won the 1996 African Cup of Nations. Our lands are full of wonders. Even though sometimes things don't go our way, we find inner strength to persevere and push forward. We dress up for the occasion. Oh, how we love to dance and sing. We've seen our fair share of victories and disappointments. But we thrive when we are together. And that, my dear child, is the beautiful story of Africa. Wow. SABC is the official broadcaster of AFCON 2019, Africa's beautiful story. Good day and welcome to the weather desk. For today, we're expecting clear skies over most parts of the country. Although partly cloudy conditions are expected over the southern parts, we do have isolated showers and rain along that southwest coast into the adjacent interior, only for this morning clearing by the afternoon. But taking a look at our temperatures, we're expecting cool temperatures in the Gauteng province, Pretoria at 20 degrees and Johannesburg peaking at a maximum of 19 degrees. Also some cold temperatures over the extreme southern parts, Ferenich will reach a maximum of 17 with Caltonville at a maximum of 18 degrees. Again, some cool temperatures are expected in the Limpopo province, but warm temperatures over the low felt and the Limpopo valley. Guiani at 26 degrees and Palabura reaching a maximum of 27 degrees. Some cool temperatures there over the western bush felt. Lipalale at 24 degrees and Tabazimbi peaking at a maximum of 23 degrees. Some cold temperatures are expected over the escarpment and the high felt. Secunda and Stanerton at a maximum of 17 degrees with Ermelo at a maximum of 16. Warm temperatures there over the low felt, Skukuza at a maximum of 27 degrees. Some cool temperatures are expected in KwaZulu Natal for today, but warm temperatures along that northern coastline, Ulundi at 25 and Richards Bay peaking at a maximum of 24. Eteguini will also be warm today with a maximum of 25. Peter Maritzburg cool today with a maximum of 23 degrees. Eastern Cape also seeing some cool temperatures for today. Partly cloudy conditions in places. Cold temperatures over the extreme northern parts. Elwell North at 22 degrees. The eastern parts also seeing some cool temperatures. East London at 24 degrees. Cool temperatures along the southern coastline with Nelson Mandela Bay at a maximum of 21 degrees. Again, some cool temperatures are expected in the Western Cape. Partly cloudy conditions throughout with Beaufort West at a maximum of 21 degrees. Otsuren will reach a maximum of 22 degrees. The Mother City will see some cool, cool conditions today with partly cloudy conditions with a maximum of 19. Freedendal peaking at a maximum of 22 degrees. Up north, we still see some cold temperatures over the southern interior. Calfini at 18 and Sutherland peaking at a maximum of 15 degrees. The eastern parts also seeing some cold temperatures. DR will peak at a maximum of 16 degrees today. The Free State seeing some cold temperatures over the southern parts. Vipinar at 15 degrees. Bloemfontein and Valcom at a maximum of 17 degrees. The eastern parts will see some cool temperatures. Frankfurt and Sasselberg will peak at a maximum of 20 degrees. And lastly, in the northwest, we also see some cool temperatures for today, but cold temperatures over the extreme southern parts. Blumhof and Dawong will reach a maximum of 18 degrees. Cooler in the eastern parts with Rustenburg at 22. Mahigeng will peak at a maximum of 21 degrees. I'll leave you there with the weather. Do stay tuned to SABC. Sarah who climbed Everest. She arrived here with much jubilation. I took every African with me to the top of the world. Most of the names on the wall are of soldiers who lost their lives in Somalia under the African Union mission in Somalia, AMISOM. In Africa, we have Ubuntu. We need to make more integration. The highlight of the Tsigama is the highest bungee jump in the world. The main driver of that area is tourism. SABC News continues to gauge our democracy throughout 2019 by highlighting the successes, failures and challenges. Democracy Gauge is back on SA Today every Tuesday from 5.30 to 6pm. It's 25 years in review of 
all aspects of the South African democratic experience. And you remain in the heart of the story. SABC News, independent, impartial. Mama, tell me a story. My child, I have a great story to tell you. Although we come from humble beginnings, we've done legendary things. South Africa have won the 1996 African Cup of Nations. Our lands are full of wonders. Even though sometimes things don't go our way, we find inner strength to persevere and push forward. We dress up for the occasion. Oh, how we love to dance and sing. We've seen our fair share of victories and disappointments. But we thrive when we are together. And that, my dear child, is the beautiful story of Africa. Wow. SABC is the official broadcaster of AFCON 2019, Africa's beautiful story. What are you predicting with the six parliament? They've got to up their game. That's it's so important for you to create platforms where people can share and grow. I think there's something special about conversation and sharing of experiences. Mkwebane investigated the